This is Mac OS Ken. The world is harshing Apple's mellow, things to do with Apple technology, and this show is old enough for a driver's license. It is Wednesday, the 26th of January, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at K-A-N-D-J-I Kanji dot I-O slash Mac OS Ken. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp, online counseling that's there for you. Going to therapy doesn't mean something is wrong with you. I mean, you get your car service to keep it from breaking down. You mow the lawn to keep the grass from getting too high. You get checkups to make sure that you stay healthy. Talking to a therapist is the same kind of thing. Routine maintenance for your mental and emotional wellness to prevent bigger issues down the line. That's what BetterHelp is. It's customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, whichever one you prefer. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Why invest in everything except your mind? As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting today's sponsor at Better help.com slash macOS Ken. That's H E L P better help.com slash macOS Ken. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that is better help. H E L P better help.com slash macOS Ken. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. January has been an ugly month for Apple shares. Remember earlier this month when shares were flirting with $183? They closed yesterday just under $160. U-G-L-Y, but they have an alibi. Quoting a piece from 9to5Mac, the large slide in the value of Apple stock this month has less to do with the company itself and more to do with macroeconomic factors around the economy as a whole and the tech sector in particular. The U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates in order to slow inflation as well as ending pandemic stimulus measures. That would mean consumers have less disposable income as well as making it more expensive for companies to borrow to fund future product development. Stellar results are expected when Apple reports first quarter fiscal year 2022 earnings on Thursday, though that may do little to boost shares since, did I mention, macroeconomic factors dragging the shares down. 9to5Mac says investors will be keen to hear what Apple CEO Tim Cook has to say about the current quarter, but the company has declined to offer guidance of late due to the supply chain and other pandemic uncertainties, and this is unlikely to change when Apple reveals its holiday quarter earnings on Thursday. Creative Strategy CEO and Principal Analyst Ben Beharin posted a similar sentiment on Twitter about tech as a whole, saying management commentary around earnings and guidance is going to be more impactful for investor models than this quarter earnings numbers on their own. Many investors need to hear management's confidence in 2022 in order to be confident themselves. Such statements may come tomorrow when Apple reports earnings for the holiday quarter, the first quarter of fiscal year 2022. After that, it's questions and answers with financial analysts. You can listen live on Apple's investor site. The call will show up as a podcast soon after, and we'll hit highlights here on Friday. Apple is expected to address supply constraints during Thursday's Q1 earnings call. Those expectations were likely heightened on Tuesday. CNET ran a piece that had the U.S. government warning that the chip shortage persists and will for some time. A report from the U.S. Department of Commerce says even with chip plants running at 90% output or greater, demand is still outstripping supply. The agency estimates that demand was as much as 17% higher in 2021 than in 2019, according to CNET. 
The solution, according to the department, is to build more capacity and build it in the U.S. CNET quotes a statement from Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo saying, The semiconductor supply chain remains fragile, and it is essential that Congress pass CHIPS funding as soon as possible. With skyrocketing demand and full utilization of existing manufacturing facilities, it's clear the only solution to solve this crisis in the long term is to rebuild our domestic manufacturing capabilities. Since their introduction, there has been a lot of concern about potential hazards around AirTag. While the device is great at finding lost or stolen items, it can be, and has been by some accounts, used to track or stalk individuals without their knowledge. Now, Apple wants to make people more knowledgeable. Mac Rumors says the Cupertino company shared an updated personal safety user guide on Tuesday. The piece has Apple saying that the guide serves as a resource for anyone who is concerned about or experiencing technology-enabled abuse, stalking, or harassment. And it now includes a section for AirTag. While a lot of it may not be news to experienced Apple users, Mac Rumors suggests giving it a once-over anyway. The piece says the guide addresses such topics as controlling who can access your location, blocking unknown sign-in attempts, avoiding fraudulent requests to share info, setting up two-factor authentication, managing privacy settings, and more. You can find a link to the guide on Mac Rumors. I will also have a link to it in this story on macOSCan.com. Apple's settlement over like new replacement devices has entered a new phase. Apple Insider says the company's $95 million settlement over replacing devices under Apple Care with refurbished equipment now has case administrators. The lawsuit started in 2016, covering class action participants who bought Apple Care or Apple Care Plus for an iPhone and iPad as far back as July of 2012. The report says plaintiffs argued that the refurbished or remanufactured devices offered by Apple as replacements were not functionally the same as new products. While it admitted no wrongdoing, Apple was willing to pay $95 million to make the whole thing go away. Although the settlement has received preliminary approval, Mac Rumor says a final hearing is slated for the 27th of April. While class action members will not get any payments before that, the piece says administrators are contacting customers who may be eligible for a payout. In the future, said Andy Warhol, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes. And I will say, it's starting to look like they'll get awards for that too. News of more nominations for Apple TV Plus today. iMore says the Cupertino streamer has been nominated for five awards by the American Society of Cinematographers and four awards by the Cinema Audio Society. Never heard of them. Nominations from the cinematographers include single episodes of Foundation, Servant, Mythic Quest, and Physical, with those last three competing against each other in the episode of a half-hour series television category. Also nominated for the feature film category, Bruno Del Bonnell for The Tragedy of Macbeth. On the sound side, the Cinema Audio Society has nominated single episodes of The Morning Show and Ted Lasso for an award. The Velvet Underground has been nominated in the category Motion Picture Documentary. And Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry, has been nominated in the category Television Nonfiction, Variety, or Music Series, or Specials. And congrats go out for a couple of award winners as well. The same I More piece as the Music City Film Critics Association has honored Bruno Del Bono with a Best Cinematography nod for The Tragedy of Macbeth. They've also recognized Amelia Jones with a Best Young Actress honor for her work in the Apple TV Plus film Coda. Another star is getting physical on Apple TV Plus, which is to say the Apple TV Plus series Physical is getting another star. Apple Insider says White Lotus actor Murray Bartlett is joining the Rose Byrne series in Season 2. 
If you've not seen it, the piece has the show follows Sheila, played by Byrne, as a quietly tormented housewife in 1980 San Diego who takes a journey of empowerment and towards success after discovering a love of aerobics. The piece says Bartlett will be playing Vincent Vinny Green, a fitness instructor and weight loss guru, as well as a late-night infomercial pioneer. The full first season of Physical is available to stream now on Apple TV+. No word on when season two hits the surface. More news in a moment, but first a word from Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Is your business moving from a few people to a few more people to where did all these people come from? If your tech team's having trouble outfitting and maintaining the Apple hardware with which your workers are working, it is time to check out Kanji. With Kanji, a new Mac can be ready for your new hire quickly and easily, with all the apps and settings they need. Devices managed with Kanji keep themselves secure. Apps are patched, Mac OS is updated, and security controls are enforced without active management from admins. It's not doing it on its own, though. You decide how soon after release updates get updated. Kanji lets you do that without having to deal with individual users or their machines. And if anybody changes anything they shouldn't, Kanji detects it and fixes it, saving you time and stress. Go to kanji.io slash macOSken for a free demo and trial. K-A-N-D-J-I. That's kanji.io slash Mac OS can. Find out why companies like Allbirds, Segment, Lacework, and others use Kanji for zero-touch Apple device management. K-A-N-D-J-I. Again, that is kanji.io slash Mac OS can. Your free demo and trial are waiting at kanji.io slash Mac OS can. Let us now hit some fun activities for you. If you're an Apple Watch owner, Apple's got a couple of activity challenges coming up in February. Mac Rumors writes up next month's Lunar New Year Challenge and this year's Unity Challenge, the prizes for which include virtual medallions and virtual stickers to stick in messages. The Lunar New Year Challenge sounds kind of like a gimme, the piece says it asks participants to do any workout for at least 20 minutes between the 1st and 15th of February to win the award. It's unclear whether that's 20 minutes every day for those 15 days, which seems excessive, or once in those 15 days, which seems like a gimme. Then again, the Veterans Day Challenge tends to be 11 minutes of activity on that day, so... Okay... Also unclear whether this challenge is global or regional. Regional is my guess, though I'm hoping it is global because I really, really, really want the virtual Year of the Tiger sticker. As for the Unity challenge, well, Unity is a bit more challenging. Mac Rumor says Apple Watch users can win that one by closing their move ring for seven consecutive days in the month of February. Again, it's unclear whether that one is global or regional. Watch your watch for more. What else do the Apple folk do? Point and click, buddy. Apple's launching a new contest for iPhone tote and shutter bugs, specifically those that shoot things as small as bugs. The Mac Observer says the Cupertino crew has announced the iPhone Macro Challenge, specifically for iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max users, it encourages participants to share their best macro photos on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtags shot on iPhone and iPhone macro challenge. Apparently open to the planet, the submission started yesterday, the 25th of January at 6.01 a.m. Pacific. Submissions close on the 16th of February at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. Must be 18 years of age or older to win. 
10 winners will be chosen by a panel of expert judges from the industry, by which they of course mean the business. Winners will get paid. Additionally, the piece says the winning photos will be displayed in a gallery on Apple Newsroom, Apple.com, Apple Instagram, and other official Apple accounts. They may also appear in digital campaigns, Apple Store locations, billboards, or in a public photo exhibition. Best of luck. Happy shooting. One last activity. If you're feeling particularly ambitious, you might try uncovering a secret government organization for $50 or less. A woman in Germany did with an AirTag. iMore highlights an Apple Insider post, which highlights a Medium post, which I'm sure we could find a way to trace back to Kevin Bacon. According to the write-up of the write-up of the write-up, Lilith Whitman spotted references to a federal telecommunications service on a website in Germany. She did not know what that was. After asking around, nobody knew what it was. So she mailed an air tag to it, like you do. As it turned out, the piece says it was delivered nowhere near where it should have been and instead landed in the building used by the Office for the Protection of the Constitution in Cologne. Again, nobody seems to know why. The obvious question is, why is mail addressed to a telecoms branch of the government finding its way to one that's designed for the protection of the Constitution, and for what purpose? Now a bit of added fun. Imore says the official line from the Bundesrepublik is that the Federal Telecommunications Service does not exist in the business area of the federal government. Maybe mail to the non-existent organization is like letters to the totally existent Santa. It's got to be delivered someplace. Why is it on a website, though? You know, they may want to look into Apple's personal safety user guide. And finally today, I remember where I was 16 years ago today. Do you? Having considered a podcast since late 2004 and worked on Inside Mac for about a year, Macworld 2006 was the first time I thought of doing daily Apple news on my own. Mad props to Frank Petrie, Daniel East, and Laura Burstein for their support. About three weeks later, on the 26th of January, 2006, an angel of the Lord announced this podcast that I thought would last about six months, maybe. Since then, we have seen the introduction and rise of the iPhone, the slow fade of iPod, the introduction of the App Store, iPhone adding 3G, then 4G, then 5G. What'll they think of next? iPad followed iPad after iPad. Apple said goodbye to Macworld, then we all had to say goodbye to Macworld. We saw the passing of Steve Jobs, the rise of Tim Cook, the mothership built a spaceship from which design king Johnny Ive disembarked. Apple Retail remade retail, then got remade itself under Angela Arendt. Apple killed the wristwatch with iPhone, then brought it back with Apple Watch. The company spent billions on Beats, which led to Apple Music, and now look at them. They're making TV shows and movies including a surprise hit about a soccer coach based on a commercial made years earlier. I'm sure making Ted Lasso is exactly what Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne had in mind in the garage 45 years or so earlier. COVID-19? That's been a bummer. More lawsuits for Apple than I care to count, and more podcasts for me than I care to remember. Technocracy Radio, Mac OS Ken Day 6, Mac OS Ken Live, iChart Radio, Mission Log, Mission Log Live, The Checklist by Secure Mac, in a few minutes, currently on some sort of hiatus, Mac OS Ken Live again. Feels like I might be forgetting one or two. Some of you followed me from inside Mac, which is humbling. I know almost none of you but I'm grateful for every one of you. For the emails, the voicemails, the Patreon support, the shoutouts on Twitter, for supporting the sponsors that support this show. If I think too much about everything we've seen and talked about and 
everything you've helped me do kind of makes me teary. And so, we go into year 17, because why the f*** not? Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and sponsored by BetterHelp, online counseling that's there for you. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macosken. This show is also sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at K-A-N-D-J-I kanji.io slash macosken. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com You can reach me a couple of ways info at macosken.com or call 716-780-4080 Until next time that is news from macOS Ken I'm Ken Ray Ciao.